down with Mac Talk, sorry, with China Mac, and kind of spoke a little bit about the whole no jumper fallout and whatnot. So I'm just going to play a bit of what he says, and then we can continue, and I'll give a little bit of my sort of thoughts on it, because I feel like Sharp has approached it from a quite mature, grown-up point of view, to be fair. He has been the one who's been, oddly enough, the least emotional. He's kind of treated it for what it is. I think he was one of the first people to kind of call out AD for leaving the way he did um, and kind of, you know, not just looking at it from the business point of view and basically thinking, hey, what was a real issue really? Could we have kind of fixed this to kind of make sure that we kept it going and whatnot? And he offered up some very interesting um, points of view on it, which I kind of definitely agreed with. So I'm going to play a bit of a clip here from the China Mac interview so you can get an understanding of what I mean and how he approached this. Let me continue. I know you wanted to talk about it a little bit, so I feel like I'll bring it out for you. You know, I mean, not and, too and, much, but I just yeah, want to like, see where, where, because I want to see more, more than the bullshit. I want to just see where you feel like, you know, the future of you did. you know, no jumper is because you're a big piece of it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I, I'm just curious as to how you feel about that. I don't really want to know about, you know, all the, well, the shit I'm just we already saying, know. Like I, I always like to push positive and I feel like I have nothing but positive things to say about the people that I worked with before. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I always want to give them their flowers. That's no matter what. You know right. what I mean? Like and acknowledge that. That's respectable and that's um and I feel that's genuine. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like that's cap as you no, say. I wouldn't it because, even bring it up. I'd just make right. little any windows and, and say little subliminal, little weird and, shit. Yeah, yeah. And you know just and just entertain it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like be that's weird, some bullshit. Yeah. I ain't trying to be on that. Like I love how he says innuendo, any windows. <laughs> Pretty cool. I loved all them niggas and still love them. Everybody that I worked with, homie. It was a hell of a motherfucking ride. Not, there's not going to be a lot of people in the world that's going to be able to ex experience that feeling right. of being with a super team and like having the fucking the entire layout. You know mm. what I'm saying? It's rare few. It's going to feel that throughout this time, bro. Right. To bring a group together. Yeah, nigga can get on one or two people. That's easy, right? Like if you can move it, that's you can do it, you know? Right. But when you got to move an actual unit, you got six, seven people that, man, all stars, top He's right, to be honest, but that's also goes to kind of back up my point as to why I don't understand some of these people that have these platforms, why they don't just hire somebody to manage the talent, like a producer, like a talent manager. I don't know what the term is, but there's definitely a term for somebody who just manages the on-air talent, who makes sure everybody's looked after, needs are met, whatever concerns they have, they can go to. So you're not only going to the founder because for some reason, I think there's this tendency for founders of platforms to also think they can be managers or they can be like leaders in that regard when they're not really the best you may be you know adam 22 was a guy that kind of birthed the idea of no jumper it was his kind of genius idea to have this platform interviewing young up-and-coming rappers the soundcloud generation blah 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 cool over time it kind of transformed into this other thing that it is now but then surely if you've got all these different personalities who have their own show have their own point of view um then you maybe need people to kind of manage them on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think if that was the case and he had like a bit of a buffer between himself and the talent, there could be a way to kind of fix issues because I think, you know, many organizations, you have issues all the time, but sometimes you just let make it work because the manager that you report to or the person that you is kind of, the person that you kind of go to when you have your issues is cool and you get along with it. It happens all the time. So I feel like if that was the case, they could have maybe held on to it and it would have been a bit of an issue. But the fact that, Adam 22 was a founder, was also one of the hosts, was also one of the employees, was also a friend. And then he did what he did to, uh, to AD in terms of talking about him and his position with another employee that then leaked out into the Reddit and then gained legs of its own and went wherever it went to. That's when it kind of went a bit weird because in general, if you're a leader and you're an owner, you should never be talking to other members of staff about other members of staff. It's just not what you do. You just have to, you know, not do that. You have to speak to other members of management about that sort of shit. But when the lines are blurred, that's where the issues come. So I feel like if they would have had somebody in between them, I think they would have been able to fix it and hold on to it um, and kind of just figure it out and kind of ride it. I personally think so, because I don't think the issues were as deep as they, you know, purported, especially in the beginning. Stars, everything we touch is gold. That's rare, man. That's rare. 
That's rare, bro. I know by experiencing in life, you know what I'm saying? Like what's rare and what ain't. And that was fucking rare. Mm. That was a rare time. Mm. That's why I think I was sad to see it go. Me too. You know, I was sad to see it. And it's nice he says that, to be fair. It's refreshing because everyone's shitting on Adam because he's a shit on Adam. And because he has a lot of, you know, for lack of a better term, there's a lot of things to shit on him about because he didn't deal with it the best. And, you know, I think in general, like I said, he's... The, the fact that he's not likable in the first place, the fact that he refused to accept responsibility. And in my opinion, personally, I think the thing that really probably didn't sit well with fans and just people in that room or that building alone, the first thing, the issue, I think, that never was really addressed, really, and they tried to and didn't really work out, was the whole house phone situation. I think the house phone situation is what made a lot of people really wary as to Adam and how he moves and shit, because it showed, raw. If Adam's doing that to House Phone, who's like somebody he deems to be like a friend, you know, not like a colleague, not some industry person, like somebody actually known for a number of years, then he can do that to anybody. And it set the alarm bells ringing, especially when you think about all the passive aggressive stuff he was saying on the pods, about bad podcasting, about being annoyed that they were bringing up drama on their own platforms. All these little subtle things were happening and it was kind of like a combination, a build up of issues until boom, suddenly it all kind of spilled over. But I definitely think that house phone situation is definitely what sparked a lot of people and got people worried. Here you go, bro. I really was like, it didn't make me feel happy. Like, oh yeah, hell yeah. Everybody like this. I can take over this. I can do that. <laughs> Hips are handy, man. If you're filming yourself having sex and going on the Calabasas fight companion, there are many things wrong. Okay, fair play. To be fair, the porn, the porn man side of him, I've never really been. It's never really bothered me. Um, it's just annoying when he always talks about porn in some way, shape, or form. You'll, you'll find a way to mention it. But the fact that that's an interest that he has or a job that he does that's also very lucrative or whatnot. Fair play. Do what you want to do. But it's just the fact that he would always find a way to kind of crowbar in some fucking porn topic during the shows that used to kind of really piss me off. Like, fuck, you know, enough of this shit, man. Leave me alone. Please, I'm bored. Yeah, no, nah, well, I understand nigga. why nah. it went there, but I, I, I didn't want to see it go like that. Hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. Like, I don't give a fuck what the naysayers say, anything. Like, they tried to, I, I could tell, like, with just certain, like, comments and just people that was moving, like, they was trying to, like, they wanted us to separate, like they wanted the segregation, like, yeah, like it's time to take this, like, you know what I'm saying? Like the comments, man, that shit was crazy. Like everybody, like, yeah, this is the move. Sharp, you ain't going either. Sharp, you ain't gonna leave. You need to fucking go. Like, I'm like, bruh, I'm not making moves based off of what the fuck somebody said. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like accept me or reject me. I don't blame the fans for saying that though, because I think a lot of these, again, a lot of these content creators, I don't think they see which is fine because they're the one making the content, but I don't think they see how people see them. So I think a lot of fans look at these guys and just believe their friends or believe their kind of family, their crew. <clears throat> so when something happens that shows you that they're not really as close as you thought they were, they were before, it kind of makes you look at all of them a, a little bit away. You know, you're like, huh? I thought you guys were all cool. And it kind of ruins all of their kind of perception or image in your head really and truly and then you start to decide and pick who you want to follow that's essentially what happened so they kind of lean into the we're friends we're cool thing for the promo for the meantime for the views and then over time they then you know something happens the relationship breaks down and then it works against them so it can work for them for a while they can also work against them when the relationship kind of breaks down so i don't think it's a bad thing that the fans were you know, trying to get in the middle of it or deciding thing because in their eyes, they kind of viewed them as, you know, a, a content version of fucking Entourage, right? Do you know what I mean? That's what they were kind of looking at in view, in real time sort of thing. You know what I'm saying? Right. If you fucked with me before, like, you should be still fucking with me now. Like, shouldn't nothing change because I didn't make certain moves. Right. That's, 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 that's weird to me, bro. And then to carry on with that, I also think with the Adam 22 thing, I think just because of how he did House Phone Dirty, and then it kind of carried over a little bit to AD, somewhat to Lush, and even look at the situation with Riley. The way Riley got fired, 
if that was me and I was working there, I'd be flipping a bit worried, right? Because Riley was like a background, behind the scenes person, girlfriend of Yuri, right? And then the story goes according to her that she goes up to Josh and Adam and says, hey, I want to pursue other things. I may want to go into hairdressing, whatever it may be, maybe to, maybe to get extra money, maybe just to transition because she was maybe feeling a bit stuck. Who knows? They say, no, don't do that other stuff. Don't go and start a course or start an internship or whatever. We're going to give you more money so that you don't need to do the other stuff and we kind of you know we really rate you stay here she stays and then unlucky for her the following week is when all the fucking beef happens and everyone kind of leaves and then i guess there's not enough money coming in so they can't pay everyone's wages so then they let her go so she told them of her ambitions she kind of you know shot herself in the foot that way by de- telling them anyway tried to do the right thing and it kind of worked in her d- disadvantage and she had nothing to do with the drama so if that was me and i was working there i'd be a bit worried like oh if they can do that to riley imagine what they're gonna do to me um and i think in general just the way he acted with people i think that's what made people think hey sharp why don't you jump away and step away because of how he treated ad how he treated house phone people just assumed that more likely than not sharp will end up having the same situation with adam because he seems to have it everybody um i think that's the only reason why people are saying that to be completely fair um kind of in a weird way looking out for him which you don't need to do because he's a grown man but i think that's where it's coming from you know what mm. i'm saying like that's that's weird to me well, this ain't no soap opera nigga like this shit ain't scripted where like it's set for everybody no this shit really happened yeah for real. it really happened like this like shit was real it's not okay well we're planning for everybody to leave next week sharp you'll be on the roster as one of the levies you know what <laughs> yeah. I'm saying? Bro? Like the script has changed. Like, yeah, the script has changed. You'll be the one that'll leave too and all the Like, there wasn't no motherfucking script, nigga. That shit happened in fucking 48 hours. And, and also don't blame him because if you remember the clip I showed you before, um, Sharp, if you believe him, which I, I do, he's no reason to lie, he mentioned during the Las Vegas trip that his lowest, he got his lowest uh, check from No Jumper that same time they were out there and I think it was like 8,400 or something dollars. So if that's the case, it doesn't surprise me that he was so bummed out when it kind of ended the way it ended because he was getting to some really serious good money in the process, having fun with people that he liked and who he deemed to be friends and whatever, you know, compadres and whatnot. It makes sense why he was bummed out about it. And he wanted to kind of try and hold it together. And he got on the phone with AD and tried to talk him out of quitting and then pun did what pun did and came through and said, nah, <laughs> and started to make that a bit of an issue. But I understand why he was kind of, you know, bummed out about it, to be fair. Because if you start touching like $10,000 per month off of the back of No Jumper alone, you know what I mean? I would fight for that shit too. You know what I mean? 72, it was to shit. Right. What what was the pressure like? How did you feel, man? Like, bro, I be having a lot of answers to a lot of shit, and that day I didn't have nothing. Mm. I didn't know what the fuck to say. Mm. I'm sitting there in shock, nigga. Like, whoa, this shit's on fire. Mm. You and, know what and, I'm saying? And like, it was at a high point for you too. This shit is on fire. I just got done doing the blue, uh, the fucking blue the face, blue face Ooh, shit. Man. Oh, and man. For, man, shit just went up, man. Like we just, we just hit the internet strong for the beginning of the year. And my plan was, I said, we gotta swing out the gate this year. That was my plan. I said, we gotta get ahead of everybody. We got to get ahead of the fucking breakfast clubs. We got to get it because people are about to get the drink champs. Love them to death. But I know in the end of it all, like in this game, that's our competitors. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, shit, we got to get ahead of this shit. And I was like, fuck it. Let's do the blue face interview. And then fucking Krishan showed up, homie, and it was just the perfect storm. Mm. I said. So oh, Krishan wasn't supposed to be there. She was not supposed to be there. It was not on. It was not on the fucking sheet that day on the call sheet. So what happened? Can you imagine doing that legendary Blueface and Krishan interview where she spazzed out, like she always does? But imagine it, it did decent numbers on there, right, in the hundreds of thousands, if not more. And then the following weeks later, all the drama happens. Can you imagine the highest of the highs, lowest of the lows? Like this content game is mean. In that day, man, sheer greatness. It went terribly wrong, I guess, for it to go greatly right. Right. 
Did you get a chance to speak to Krishan and them before, or like it was just? I didn't get the chance to speak to. Well, I did because they were doing the music video. I was in the, actually my set. Anyway, you got you, you get a gist of it. Um, Sharp spoke really well, I think, in this interview. You can check out the entire interview here, courtesy of Mac Talk. It's available on his channel here. Uploaded just recently the other day so definitely check out if you haven't already um although china mac is a little bit annoying and you know his personality has changed considerably since he's moved out to la which is definitely again proof that la definitely does corrupt people it definitely does break people um it just turns you into a weird person um he was never like this before but maybe he was maybe that's who he was deep down but i still think he puts out semi decent um content aside from when he's kind of you know playing up with the cameras and shit i think his streams are really entertaining he's quite a funny guy anyway himself but it has been a bit of a trip to see how different la china mac is compared to how he is when he's back home in new york he's really really changed like super duper changed but you know maybe living in entertainment city or the entertainment capital of the world you kind of have to do what you have to do in it so who knows 